Good afternoon. Um, our next speaker needs no introduction, um, but I need to do my job so I can get paid. Okay, so let me let me tell you a few things about this guy. Uh, Lasse Sekukkonen is a retired Finnish hockey defender, a true serial winner. He won the Finnish championship four times uh, with Karpat and also played for the Chicago Blackhawks and the Philadelphia Flyers of the NHL for a total of four seasons. He played in, in many other teams as well, uh, and of course plays for, played for the Finnish national team, okay, where he represented them at the World Championships, winning six medals, including a gold, and also uh, as a three-time Olympian, winning three Olympic medals. I'm so jealous, uh, really. Um, since finishing his playing career, uh, Lasse has worked as a lecturer and a trainer, specializing in mental coaching and leadership. And in his 21 professional seasons, check this out, he was a captain in 11 of those seasons. So when he talks about there to lead, I think he really knows what he's talking about. So please welcome Lasse Kukkonen. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great session. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I'm gonna start off by using my good friend's Mikko Manner phrase that hopefully you all can understand my rally English. If you don't get what I'm saying, please come and ask after. Personally, I try to explain it to you a little bit better. But today I will talk about leadership. And uh, hopefully if you have some questions, if you disagree, just speak it out, ask, challenge me, because I don't have all the answers for you guys. I only have my experience, how I felt, how I think that what happened, and hopefully it starts something that you start thinking what it means to you. I don't have the right answers. I, again, only have my experience. But first of all, as when we talk about leadership, I think the first thing is to understand that we all do it in some level. We all do it a little bit different styles, and you have to find your own way to do it. You can't copy me, or you can't copy the head coach you had, or the assistant coach, or the GM, or anybody else. You have to find your own way. And if you want to help your players to grow their leadership, you have to help them to grow as a person. How they see life, how they see hockey, how they treat people around them. Because if you only try to help them to be a better player, you're not helping to grow their leadership. But let's get going. And like I said, if anything comes to your mind, speak out. A little bit about my background. I, was, I played 20 years all over the world, a couple of years in the USA, then a couple of years in Russia, a little bit in Sweden, and most of my career in, uh, in all, of, all of Finland. A lot of different teams, a lot of different coaches, a lot of different styles to coach and lead. For me, I think the biggest thing was that the places that we think that we had some success were the places where the people actually wanted to work together. Not, maybe not the highest paid players, not the highest spending team, but every player had some leadership and they wanted to help each other. They wanted to work together, be together, know the persons they are working with. And the coaches and the players, they are in the same team. There is not, not such a thing as a coaching group and then there's a players group. Because you need both if you want to have success. You need to have leadership in a both groups. So you need to help players to grow their leadership if you want to have any success. And now, like I said earlier, I was captain in many places. I was lucky, lucky enough to get the chance to be captain, got the honor to be the captain. I was captain first time in Oulu when I was 21. And it, now when I look back, I was totally a different person, of course, 20 years ago. But the biggest thing at that time for me was the older players helped me to understand the captain is not about how many goals do I score or how many minutes I play. It's about how I treat people around me. Can I help 
the other players to be better? Can I help the coaches to be better? Or am I just blaming the coaches or blaming the other, other players? My job as a captain is help the team to be better. So that I use my privilege as a captain the right way. Not if I get something for myself, bigger salary, more fame, get to walk to the bar, everybody knows you, or if I help the players at the rink. That's my job as a captain. I don't have to be the best player. I, never, I, I wasn't the best player in any team that I played. I was, I, to be honest, I, was, I think I was pretty average, pre, average player. But I get to play 20 years because I hope that I help some teams to be better. And I actually became a better player that way. Then in a national team, like you, we are all here now, everybody follows hockey now. Every, you go outside, all the people are talking about, they all have some opinion about you, about me. Am I the right person? Am I, am I the good player? Some of them think that I was in the wrong place all the time. I shouldn't be there. I can't control that. But what I can control is that when I go there, if I'm helping the team or not. And I can't do that if I don't know who I am, if my coaches don't know who I am as a person. I can't have any leadership if we don't have trust and if they don't know me deeper than just a hockey player. So if you want to help your players to grow better leadership, you need to help them to be a better person. You get to know them. Not just measure by how many goals, how many minutes they play. The goals will come if they can trust that you're going to trust them anyways, if they, they don't score today. So, the, so many times, you put the pressure on the leadership and the players who are leading the team that they need to score the goals. They will score the goals if they know that they don't have to score the goals. That, and you still trust them and you still care about them as a person. I could never play in a national team if I had to wonder what the coaches think of me as a person if I'm good enough, if we lose tonight. Because so many outside of the team are thinking that way anyways. So go back to that. If you want to help your players, start behaving that way. We talk about it all the time, but when things get tough, we start acting that the other way. We start pointing fingers, we start talking about, okay, now you're not, you haven't scored in the five games. You haven't done this and that. So you need to talk about it before the pressure is on. How are we going to behave when the things get tough, when we start losing? Because we know that you're going to lose some games. Everybody does. So you need to have set the boundaries, set the values, how you're going to... What's, what's important? Is it the goals or is it the, how you act every day? When you come to the rink, you have the right attitude. If you come in, you're happy, you're helping people, you're positive, or are you blaming people? Are you kind of down, low energy? And expect that, not the goals. Expect the behavior, right behavior. So, that's enough about me. That is not important, but it, it's important who you are. Why? Because that's the thing you, you try to hide from your players, who you really are. Because you are, as a coach, you have to know everything. You have to control everything. Because you, you can't say to players, oh, I don't know that, I don't know what happened. But at the same time, 
if you really want to help grow their leadership, the players need to know who they are. I need to be okay that I'm not going to be perfect. I will make mistakes. I'm going to be afraid. I'm going to feel shame. Well, so does the coaches, like you know. And that's the thing you try to hide from your players. So you saying you want them to know who they are, but at the same time you're pretending that you're perfect. So you're actually saying that it's okay to be who you are, but you're pretending that no, it's not, you need to be perfect. Because I'm perfect, I know everything. And that's, as, for me as a player, when I was young back then, when I got to be the captain first time, that was the biggest thing to realize that I don't have to be perfect. I want to be, I try to be perfect, but I will make mistakes. As a player, as a human being, as a father, as a friend. But that's okay. That's why we have the team. There's other players who can help me. There's coaches who can help me. But we talk about it all the time. You talk about it, about it to, the, to your players. But at the same time, you can't say that you're afraid. You feel ashamed. You start losing. You all feel the pressure. You're nervous. You don't sleep. But then you come to the rink and you think, you're acting like you have all the answers. I know how to fix this. And to, if you are truly honest, you don't. You need somebody to help you because you can't fix it by yourself. This is a team sport. I can't fix it. I need coaches. I need other players. So start actually knowing who you are. Like I said, that's the thing we try to hide from everybody. That's the thing that some of you don't even show it to your closest people. Your spouses, your kids. At the same time, there's not going to be any trust, really trust, unless you do it. You can talk about trust, but you don't act that way. It's not about how the player shoots. He will learn how to shoot if he can trust that you still will care about him, even if he doesn't score. Well, then if you want to know who you are, you need to find your values. Your personal, not team, your. Now this is the, uh, another thing that I had to do when I was a young, young player. 21, 22. How do I spend my time? That's the key if I want to know who, who I am. Because we can't do all those things. You know, coaching takes a lot of time. A lot of time. Then you need to be okay with the time you're using. And you need to be okay that you can't do everything. As a player, we all know that I can't do all those things. I can't have time for friends, family, relationship, hobbies, hockey. There's not enough time. And again, if I don't know how to spend my time, I'm not going to be able to face the people the right way, the good way. Because I'm going to be grumpy, miserable. I'm going to feel anxious. The same thing for you, coaches. So many things you can't control. You can't control how you use your time. Then you talk about your players. Okay, I want you all to have free time. But you don't have any free time. You have to drink every day. I want you to take care of your families. You don't see your families ever. So again, you're talking the right things but you act in a different way. You're actually showing the players that you don't need to spend time with your families. And I'm not saying you have to spend with your families. I'm not saying that. But you have to learn, understand that if you say and ask your player to do it, and you, you say, okay, it's important to me, but you act in a different way, it's not important. I'm not saying this is not going to take a lot, lot of 
time for you. But, but for me, when I played hockey, I had two things in my life that I can spend time. It's hockey and family. So I didn't have a lot of time for my friends. I didn't have a lot of friends out, outside of hockey. And I'm saying you need to do it that way. I'm okay with it because I didn't have time. I had time for this, these two things, hockey and family. And I was away a lot. Played, I think, 10, 10 times in the World Championship. So I was away every, every springtime. After I come back, then, I'm, then I stayed home. I didn't go fishing with my buddies. I like it. Would have been fun. But again, if I want to be happy when I go back to the rink in August, I need to spend this time with my family. So that when I go to the rink, I can help the people, help the other players, because I'm okay how I use my time in the summertime. I don't have to feel that, okay, I would like to be home more because we are okay, uh, away again so many nights. Because I spent the time that I can control at home. Did I miss something because of that? Of course. But again, to know who you are so that you can act the way that people can understand why you're behaving the way you're behaving. Once you know who you are, let's start talking about success. And I think a lot of times we think the success is the, the circle above. So when I'm the head coach and I get paid, paid a lot, then I'm a good coach. I'm, I have a lot of success. Then you talk, talk to the coaches. Well, I don't have any free time. I don't have any physical or mental health. But I get paid, paid a lot. I'm a good coach. Again, go back. You talk to your kids. I have three, three daughters at home. And I hope when I talk to them when, when they hit 30, that they, they don't say, that, okay, I, I get paid a lot. I'm the CEO, but I hate my job. And I'm mentally exhausted. So go back again. If you want your players to have success, make sure that they treat their life like the circle underneath. Because there's the other way around, it won't last. I, I saw my career a lot of, almost, I would say, until I was 27, 28, like the circle above. I'm a good player. I'm a great player if I make it to NHL and I make, get a good contract. Well, when I was 27, I realized I wasn't good enough to stay there. I wasn't a good enough player. I still wanted to play, but I knew that that was the highest paid season for me. What do I do next? Retire? Well, then I talk, talked to my mentor. And he said, what if you start seeing your career like the circle up underneath? So that start take, taking care of yourself better. Take some time off of hockey a little bit more. I, by, by doing that, I actually played my best games after that. I played my best games when I was, I would say, 32, 33, 34. When I didn't measure up my job, how I get paid. Of course, we need to get paid. I, I'm not saying that, but it can't be the only thing that you see or you expect from your players. Score more goals and get go to the NHL. Then they go to the NHL. Then they do well. They get a lot of money. Then they retire and then they hit the hit the wall because they've been measuring their life, whole life through that circle. They might have won a lot of things. It doesn't help them once they hit the new phase in, in life. So if you want to grow their leadership, start talking about that. Start acting yourself like that, because a lot of time, again, 
let's go to the August now. We finish league, opens up. You talk to the coaches on the media, and they all say that I want my players to be happy, enjoy life, feel good about themselves. And then we go all the way until the end of the season, and you look at the coaches, take the picture of coaches, and they look like they've been homeless for two years because they spend all their time at the rink worrying about hockey. They don't have any free time, and at some point they don't even like what they're doing. Again, I haven't coached, so it's easy for me to say. I don't know the right answers. I'm not saying it doesn't look like you're acting the way you're talking. That's the thing. And I'm not saying you have to talk that way. Then say, I want that everybody spends all their time at the ring and don't have any free time, because this is the most important thing for every, every one, one of you in this locker room. At least you're honest. So before you expect leadership from your players, make sure you are acting the way that you have the leadership. We don't need bosses, we need leadership. So, I think we all know this, but for you the main goal is to find a ways to help people around you. What can I do to help this boy to learn? What can I help? What can I do to help my coaching staff to learn from life? If you can do that, most likely they will be better players, coaches, and you will look good. But if you only think, what do I get from this? If I can get this guy playing better, he will score more goals, I will, look, I will get to the next coaching job, or I, we will win the cup and I will get that on my resume. It's not going to work. That's not the leadership. That's telling people what to do. That's not leadership. Leadership, leadership is about inspiring people to do things because they want to do it, not because they have to do it. Of course, you get the results by forcing people to do things, but don't expect them to have any leadership because you're telling them all the time what to do. Ask them, what can I do? How can I help? Instead of telling them to turn this way. Stop here, come to the rink earlier. Go to sleep earlier. So before you start coaching about the way we play, start wondering how I can these players emotionally connect it together. How I can help them to show, them, show me how they feel. If you can do that, then they will have, I will have more interest on my behavior, my leadership. But if you only think that you're going to get the best out of people, if you can pay them more or make them want to earn more, they only expect a return. They don't want to do things because they want to help each other. That's, again, can you help them to grow their leadership? And I understand that the biggest thing for me about the leadership was later on in my career was that the, my, the, the way I behave, it's my way. And I was forcing young players to do it my way. You have to act like me, be like me, then we're going to have a good team. Until I was a roommate with my, my friend Johan-Matti Aaltonen, who's totally different from me. He sees the game different way, he sees the life different way, and we became friends, and I learned that I actually need him. He made, he made me a better person. 
we all want to get to the same goal, our paths were different. We didn't have the same route. So many times we want people to be like I am, be like who you are, be the players like you are, see the game like you see the game. But we need all, everybody to feel safe to be who they are. Of course, we need to have boundaries, but we need to understand that we don't want to change the individuals. We want them to make the team so that I can be, I can prepare, I can see the life the way I see, and the guy next to me, he can prepare and do the things the way he does. And if I let him, I trust him to do it, the way he does, by showing the example, doing it my way, if it's right or, right or wrong, I don't know, maybe he finds the way that works for him. Then he will have the leadership to help the next guy. And then we will come a better team. As a team, we all understand that we have to talk about that we all come in the locker room, we choose to be there. We don't have to be there. So we all want to be part of the team, if it's a hockey team or family or friendship group. And if you want to help your teammates, you need to talk about that this is the first thing that we have to understand. By being a member of the group is a privilege, not that you're forcing players to be in the group. And what I mean that is, this is the uh, diamond by Frank Martella about motivation. A lot of times the leadership for the best players, especially the young players, they think that if they only keep scoring the goals, they will be good players. But if you really, truly want to be the best version of yourself, you need to find the motivation from closeness and good deeds. If you want to help your players to have motivation, you need to feed their volunteering and capacity so that they feel more freedom, not that they are you're forcing them to do things. And once they learn that, then you start talking about them, that if they truly want to have the best version out of yourself, they need to start seeing how they can help people around them. And like I said, I don't think I was a good player, skill-wise. I think my biggest strength was this. As a, as a young player, I realized that I can actually make a good career by helping the players, the team around me. So doing, paying attention to closeness, having the motivation to come to the ring, not that I get from something, get the motivation to come to the ring that I can help somebody, I can help the team. Do the good deeds. So actually do something for somebody else. And again, if we go look at the teams that have won something, these are the two keys that you can see all those teams. It's not about who practiced most or who had a best VO2. You need to have those things, of course. But the key is that how well the players feel that the coach's motivation is closeness. How well they set the example by doing the good deeds. 
Because a lot of time we get the motivation or we stay and we focus only on status approval because we are afraid. And again, if you have a good players on your team that you think they're going to be great, then you need to start talking to them about closeness. If they truly want to be good players, the best version of themselves. That's a leadership. And of course, when you start talking about that, you need to start acting that way too. So that before you start talking play players how they do it and what they do, start talking about why they come to the rink. What's the reason? What's the reason for you to go to the rink every morning? A lot of times we think, okay, it's we get paid, it's the money. Or we, I, I thought for a long time that my why is winning, to win something, to win the court medal. Until I was at the point of my career that I realized I can't win anything new anymore. Why I still kept playing for like, I would say, six, seven years? Because I realized the why for me was the same thing. Why I started hockey to belong in a group, to people in a locker room. That was the reason I opened the door every morning. I didn't have to anymore. I choose because I like being around those people. I, I never liked practicing in the summertime. That wasn't my thing. I did it because that was the way I can help my teammates. I can help my D partner. If I want to help my D partner, I have to be in a good shape because otherwise I can't help him. I can just talk about helping him, but I'm actually letting him down at the rink if I don't do the work. But I didn't do it because I loved running. I hate it. I haven't run since I retired at all. I only play tennis now because I, now I get to choose. But then I have to do those things. But I, I couldn't get myself to do those things just for me. So what is the why? That's the most important. A lot of times when we go back, we think the, the why comes from the bottom side, side of the diamond. Safety, money, status, winning. Okay, now I'm a good player because I won world championships. Is that the motivation for the next morning to go to the ring again? I don't think, I don't, if we truly want to be the best version or be a good team, that's, that's not enough because it's too far away. You need something that you feel motivated every morning when you go there. For me, like I said, it was the people. I don't, I don't miss winning. I miss people. And if you say, a lot of times people say that I, I won a lot. I won four Finnish championship and, uh, and the world champion. So I played 20 years, so 15 years I wasted my life. I didn't want anything. Or I was in Russia three years, didn't win anything. Didn't win anything in Sweden either. We actually got kicked out of the elite league the year I was there. But I got to meet a lot of good people. And even back then, when, when it wasn't so enjoyable to be there, we were losing a lot. The reason to go to the rink was to, to get to meet the players, the coaches, trainers, everybody. So when you have these young players coming in and we want to tell them all the time what to do, how to do it, it is important. But before that, you need to find out what is their why. What is the reason they come to the rink those mornings when things are not easy? 
and what you expect from them on those mornings. So we go back to the, how they behave. Not, they will figure out what to do when they come to the rink, if they have the right why. They will ask you, okay, what do we need to do today? Instead of you going, okay, you have to jump on a bike and ride it for 15 minutes, and then we're going to be okay. And he can do that. He can ride the bike for 15 minutes if you tell him. Most likely it doesn't help at all, because he's not focused on what he's doing. He doesn't care about what he's doing. He just do it because he has to do it. And like I said, we get the results, but we don't get the leadership that will make the difference when things get hard. Because then when the things get hard, they wait, they wait you to tell them, tell them what to do. And you can't be on the ice when the things get hard. I was just talking to my coach, junior national team coach, yesterday. And I didn't remember, but he told me that uh, when I was 18, we were in the world championship. We had a final game against Sweden. And if we win that, we win the gold medal. And he said that he didn't say to us players anything during that game. Anything. Because we had been together for three years, and he trusts that we know how he wants us to play, he knows how he wants us to behave, talk to each other, solve the problems together. He, we knew who's going to go on the ice when the power play starts. Of course, he said to players, but what to do when we go? He didn't need to have the board and show it, okay, go in, pass to this player, pass to this player, stop here, turn this way. The best thing that he didn't say anything to players on the ice. Because it's not a video game. It doesn't help if you yell to them that skate, 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 pass, shoot, stop. They will learn, but you have to make them figure it out. And that will take time. It takes time. And it might be that you are not there to see the results. That's the key. That wasn't your motivation to be there, to see the results, to get the results for yourself. You were there to help somebody. I was my last eight years in Oulu. I knew that I'm not going anywhere any, anymore. I'm going to play here until I retire. So if I just go there, okay, I want to. I want to win more, more cups. Then I have to go and demand players from the team that are ready. I don't want to see our young players to come in because it takes time for them to learn how to play the game in the elite league. But if my motivation is help them, if I help them, they will learn something, they will become better players, our chances to win cup will increase. We will be closer to winning without me being there that, okay, I want to beat my, my good friend Ilka Mikkola's record, eight, eight cups. If that was my motivation, I would say that I wouldn't be here today talking to you guys. And again, I'm not saying it's the right way. That was the my way, seeing things. That was my values, that I want to do the things this way. A lot of times when we talk about hockey, we want to treat it like the finite game. It starts and after 60 minutes we're done. Season starts and at the end of the season we're done and we see who, who was the best team. And It's a finite game. Starts and stops. Beginning and the end. But it's not. We have to see it like the infinite game. Because it never ends. There's always the next game. There's always a new season. So instead of treating like we started today and we end here, so we're kind of ready. Now we're ready. Now we know how to play, how to live our lives. What if we treat it the way that 
We learn things every day. Because you want your players to learn new things. Again, leadership, show example by learning yourself every day. If I want to have the young players courage to learn new things, I have to have the courage to learn new things and be open to new ideas. Of course, I have opinions that this is the right way, like everybody does. But then I can, okay, you see it this way. Could it work? I played with, uh, my last year, I played with the young player, Topi Niemela. And I think I liked about him was that he wasn't afraid to say that he thinks that I played a certain situation in the wrong way. And he was right. He could help me by saying his opinion. We could learn together to be better. But if you only see, that's the, th the hardest part of hockey is that because we face it like the finite game. We think that once we won the cup, we're all good, and now we figure it out the way to be the best team. And that's the reason somebody else wins it next year. Same thing in life. If you think that, okay, now I'm ready, I know, I know how to coach, I know how, how we should play, I know that I need to change this person, this people, or this person, this player. What if you can see it? Okay, what can I learn from today? How can I be a little bit better tomorrow? Can I learn something from life today? Because if I want my players to learn from life, I need to be ready to make some changes in my life too. Back to leadership behavior. There's only two ways to do it. We can manipulate it, we can dominate people, or we can inspire people. If you, if you want to have and show leadership, it all becomes down to trust. This is, the, this is from the US, I think it's a Navy or a SEAL. They ask, what kind of teammate do you want for yourself or the partner in, in, in war? And again, of course, we all want that high performance, high trust players. But at the same time, we know that there's not too many of those players in, in this world. Then there's a high performance, low trust, medium performance, high trust. And those Navy guys, they choose medium performance with the high trust over the high performance with the low trust, even if their life depends on their partner. And again, I ask, when you put your team together, how many times you choose the high performance with the low trust over the medium performance with the high trust, and then you expect to have the leadership, but you choose with the numbers. Oh, he scored 10 goals, Lasse only scored 5 goals, let's get rid of the Lasse, he's a bad player. A lot of times we reward in life and in sports always the high performance. And then we, all the coaches talk about teamwork. But then when you have opportunity to choose, you always pick the player even if you know that, okay, he has this and that, he doesn't play for the team, but he scored this many goals, let's pick him and he will show the le right leadership in this group. How do you act? Which one is first? Trust or performance? Exactly. It should be. A lot of times, you treat the players that you talk about trust all the time, that we need to trust each other. But at the end of the day, you measure the performance because it's easier. You all can look from the stat sheet that, okay, last didn't score any goals. Let's get somebody who will score some goals. It's easier because trust is a feeling. 
you can't put it on a on a map on a on a paper that says to you, okay, Lasse was the most trustful player on the ice today. Of course, you have some stats for that, but small feeling. Well, how do you build trust with your players? The hardest part is that you need to trust them first. Been in a lot of teams and all, every time the coaches say that my door is always open. Do you say to your kids, you see your teenager going, going to his room, his or her room, and you just go in your room and say, my door is always open. Most likely, the teenager won't open your door. He won't come and tell you what's wrong. It's the same thing with the players. Exactly the same thing. If you expect them to make the first step, that's not our leadership. Leadership is taking that step first. So you tell them about your life, family, your values, your challenges in life. You tell them what you're scared of. I, uh, I came back to Oulu in 2013, and I got to be the captain in, in the team. We started, started off the season pretty well, then we hit the, hit the rough spot. We lost five or six games, and uh, then we have the we had a meeting with the coaches in the middle of the night, like everybody does at that time. Everybody in the locker room, and, okay, let's talk about what's wrong. And like everybody who's been in a situation like that knows that there's, okay, we start talking about, do we practice the right way? Do we play the right way? Do we travel the right way? All those things that are important, but are not the keys to fix the problem, because the Problem is trust. We don't trust the system. We don't trust the people. And uh, one of the players said that we don't know each other. And I realized as a captain, I've been talking to the young players that if, say, if there's anything wrong, if you feel that there's something wrong, come and talk to me. But how could they do that? Because they didn't know who I am. They only knew what the, they can find from the internet. The stuff that I showed you at the, at the start of the presentation. I played in NHL and I'd, I've been a captain and stuff like that. But they didn't know that doesn't tell anything who I am to them. So if I want them to trust me and tell me that there's something wrong the way we play or the way we travel or anything like that, they need to know who I am. So I need to start telling about my life to them. I need to trust them first. It's the same thing for coaches. If you want your players to have leadership, you need to trust them first before they trust you. And yes, that might end up biting you back. That's always the risk if you trust the people first. But you can't have leadership if you don't trust the people first. Yeah, it might cost you a job. That's true. That's why you have to be okay the way you see success. Because if you see the success only the way that how much you make and where you coach, you can't trust people around you. And again, it's easy for me to say I've only been a player. But I think for me, the last six, seven years in Oulu playing there, was the most enjoyable time of my life. And I didn't make as much money as I made somewhere else. The hockey, my best years was, were behind me. But the reason for that was that I could trust the people I work with. I knew that even if I played a bad game, I knew that the coaches that are there, they're not going to throw me under the bus. I knew that I had a, actually I had a really rough uh, six months before the Olympic Games in 2018. And I told my coach, Mikko Manner, in one meeting that I think I'm, I'm done. 
I'm not going to come to the ring next week. I was struggling really bad with my game. And the coach said, okay, then I, I'm going to retire to you. I'm not going to come to the ring either. I'm not going to let you give up now. And I was at the point of my career that I was too old for national team, too old for my team. I was slow. I didn't get any better. So for him, the easiest way would be to push me in a smaller role, give me less ice time. What he did was say that, okay, you're staying, I'm staying, and I keep playing you. You're going to be better. And I didn't get any faster anymore. But I got my confidence back little bit, little by little. And at the end of that year, we won the cup, and I actually played a lot in the, in the playoffs. Again, I didn't get any faster during the season, but he showed, and he was the first year coach. First year coach, and he said to me, okay, if you're going, I'm going. Well, that commitment made me more confident, made me work a little bit harder maybe, and actually gave me a lot that I can learn in life, how you treat people. Because the trust, the way it goes, if you think about your kids, like I said, I have three kids. My oldest one, she's pretty into school, pretty good at school, get, gets good, good numbers, but I hope that she knows that if she comes home and she gets, let's say, six, I'm not going to say to her that, okay, nice try, but the neighbor's girl got eight, so we switch you. But that's the, how we treat people in this business. Okay, Lasse had a rough spot. Let's kick Lasse out. And we can save a lot of money. We can actually buy a good player here who can actually skate. But then we talk about trust. We will we have a team that everybody can trust each other. And at the same time, when they're off spot, we just move the player. Of course, you need to do sometimes we, the changes happen. I'm not saying that. Then you need to learn how to communicate those changes. And this is the hardest part of leadership. Because we think that a lot of times that, okay, being a good team member is only talking about the good stuff, nice stuff, the easy stuff, being happy and saying that, okay, you're a good player and tap the back. No, it's not. Again, back in life, the same thing with your family, with my kids. I'm not helping them if I'm not saying when they do bad stuff. If they miss the school, I'm not helping them say that it's okay to miss the school. Just be happy and enjoy life. Because they need to go to school. That's the law. But I need to talk to them the way that they feel that I care about them, but I'm at the same time, I'm honest. It doesn't help for me to force them to go to school because I can't be there every morning to walk with them to the school. They need to want to go to school. And that's, I think this is the hardest part of leadership. How we communicate with the players so that they know that you care, but you can be honest about the way we behave. So that you don't need to talk about you didn't score the goals. You can talk about what was your mood this morning when you came to the rink? How did you treat the people, the players around you this morning? Did you have an energy or did you help the players? Did you help your staff? You can talk about that. The calls will come after that. And I think this is the only key, the only thing that I can think for this one is that you start paying a lot of time how you communicate. And first of all, of course, communicate with your players. Talk to them. Spend time with them outside of hockey, not 
not so that every meeting is not about how you play. Like I said, they will ask. They know if they haven't scored goals. You don't have to tell them. Or they know if they've been playing, playing bad. They know that. They go into that meeting. They hear that, okay, head coach, head coach wants to talk to you. They know when they walk to that room, they know that they've been playing bad. You don't need to tell them that, okay, you've been playing bad. You need to talk about it, but lead to that behavior that lead to bad game. Bad game games will happen, of course, all the time, but they will start learning how to prepare, how to behave, so that those bad games don't happen so often. Then if you want to have the players to learn about the leadership, I don't know any other way than you need to sit down with them and put it on a paper, so that how they see the successful leader or leadership, and put it on a paper. And then you can go back, you can start the week with the leadership group. You don't have to talk about, okay, we lost two games and we won one game last week. You can start the week with the group and ask, did we behave the way we want to behave last week? Did we come to the rink and work hard? Did we set the example by working hard? Did we care about our teammates? How we react to mistakes? That's the key for coaches, because so many times you can see the other team scores and TV goes to coach and he's shaking his head. The message you're sending to players is that I did all the things right, I told you how to play and you can't do those things. It's not helping the player, he knows he made a mistake. It doesn't matter if he's 6 or 26. He knows that he doesn't do the things that you ask. He made a mistake. How you react? Can I help? Can I help the next line go to the eyes that they have good feeling that they can be good? If I can do that, most likely I help the player who made the mistakes. Because if that line scores a goal, it's an even game again. Nobody remembers the mistake. But so many times you see the coaches shaking their heads being mad about the mistakes. And I know it's, I do it too as a player, of course. We all do it. But then we can start learning how to change it a little bit. So that if my D partner makes a mistake, I don't blame him. It doesn't help if I point the finger. It, it was his fault. I, was in a, I had my guy. They don't, the goal is still there. The key is how we score the next goal. We can't get that one goal back. But if I point the finger, most likely we won't score the next goal, it's the other team. But if I step up and protect the player who made a mistake, then we can actually score the next goal. If the coach is mad at my D partner, I can say that he played the situation like I told him. It was my fault. I told him to play it like that. Then I can protect him. And actually be leader so that we can have the next goal. And we will make mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes. I treat people bad. I act the, the wrong way at the bench because we're all human. That's the key. So instead of, instead of chasing the perfection, and I know all the coaches, they want to be perfect. And you feel a little bit insecure all the time that you are not doing enough. Well, the same feeling we players have, the leader players, leadership group has. So make sure that you show them that you care and they are good enough, no matter if they make a mistakes. Same thing in life. My wife, I hope 
she loves me not because I'm a perfect husband or, or dad, because I'm not. But I hope she loves me because she knows who I am. Not perfect, make mistakes, and still chooses to be with me. And again, you need to have the same feeling with your players, with your coaching staff. Because that's what we all are looking in life. And hockey is not different. Same thing in hockey. And I know it's hard, and it may sometimes hurt, but at the same time, that's the thing we're all looking. I think my time is up, so hopefully somebody got something out of this. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. If not, I hope you have some ready questions for me. <laughs> Big thank you for that. Lasse, thank you so much. I've got a million questions to ask you if we need to. But uh, before I do that, um, I wonder if we got any questions coming, coming from, from the audience. Or would you like me to warm you up a little bit? Let me, let me make a start, and then you can think of your, your question. Uh, Lasse, you've made a, a big point about the, um, the idea of trust over performance, okay? and how, for example, the Navy SEALs may take someone that is medium performance but high trust over someone that is high performance but low trust. And you, you talked about that from the context of players, for example. Yeah. But also I'm thinking in, in today's world, uh, where players are more powerful and have more, they, they, can, they can choose where to yeah. go more. Um, do you feel that players are now choosing to play for coaches that may be less performance but very high trust? Is that, is that, is that going to happen where players are going to go and play for coaches that are, they might not be the best technical and tactical coaches in the business, but there are, pe there are people that they can trust. Is that you think that works both ways, from coaches to athletes and athletes to coaches? Yeah, of course, I think. Especially if, you th if the player is in a situation that he can choose the place he's going. If there's the other coach he knows that he can trust and you know, will help you when the things get hard, and the other coach that you're not sure about that, he will go to the team that he knows that. Yes. When, when, because everybody will have bad stretches of games. And if, the, if he knows that this coach will stand by me at that, that moment, then, then he will go there. Yeah, Because I mean, you said something that really stuck with me, which is the idea of, you know that at some point in a season, things are going to go wrong. Yeah. You know, very rarely you have a full season where things go wrong. And, yeah. and to, to talk previously about what will we do when things go wrong, yeah. so we are prepared. Is that something that physically happen in your teams that you were preparing yourselves for when things go wrong? Yeah, we talk about it at the summertime when we don't have any pressure on results. We talk about it, how we want to behave every day. Doesn't matter if we lose the game yeah. or we win the game. We believe that if we keep behaving this way, the wins will come. Yeah. So once we hit the rough spot, lose a couple of games, we can go back to that. Now, we actually have to go back to that all the time, every week. Yeah. But then we go, okay, we lost three games last week. Did we come to the rink ready to work? Or did we just come to the rink and fake that we are working? Yeah. And it, then we go back to that, how we communicate, that we, we talk about it because we care. I say to the player that, okay, you came to yesterday morning and you weren't ready. Maybe you went out last night or something like that. But I'm saying because I want to help you so that next time when you come to the ring, you're ready. Yeah. Great. Thank you. I wonder if we got... Yeah, we've got a question there. Uh, I think we have a microphone that we can get to you so everybody can hear you. I have just small question. For the camera. I think we're going to need it for the people that are not here watching online. Yeah. Hi. Sorry, you told about your kids. You have three kids and yeah. your kids play ice hockey? No, they actually play volleyball. You don't have <laughs> They actually, uh, well, I asked my oldest one. She's 15 now, and she looked at the, the, this 
this is like five years ago. And I asked her, like, do you want to play hockey? And she look, looks at me and said, I've seen you when you come to the home after the games, how much pain you are. I don't want to ever play hockey. <laughs> so maybe I wasn't the best role model for that. No, it's not. But they actually, they love volleyball. And it's been a pleasure to actually get to spend some time with them in, in volleyball, because I don't know any, anything about volleyball, so nobody asks me anything about it. I can just be a dad. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Thank you for that question. That's a, that's a fantastic question. Any other questions from, from you guys? There we go. We've got one here. If you don't mind, uh, just to identify yourself, name, and where you're from, that'd be great. Uh, Ivan from Switzerland. <clears throat> I have a question. You told about trust. Yep. You had a bad moment um, during period and that the coach trusted you and he gave you ice time like yeah. before. Yeah. But now <clears throat> you have another player. Um, he played well and he said, okay, now my performance <clears throat> is very good. Maybe I should become more trust from the coach and more ice time. And you, you play not so good and you get the trust. Now, what's, how I can give you trust, you and the other guy as well? It it's, uh, seems complicated. Yeah. yeah, it's really complicated. I think at the same time, that's the thing you need to communicate with the players after the game, why you choose to do it the way you did it. And, you know, where we have the history, I, I told my captain that I will trust him even if he has the rough spot and I need to stand by the by that now and your time will come if it's a young player that and I know you've been playing well and maybe maybe next year the Lasser retires and you get to play more. <laughs> but let's let's make sure that he retires happy. No but I, I say that I know it's a I know it's a it just that's maybe the hardest situation. But the only thing for that is that you communicate it before you are in a situation with the players. So that they kind of, they might have a chance to understand why you're behaving like the way you are, and it, of course, some point you you hit the spot that you know, Lasse can't play anymore. Then you need to sit down and talk with Lasse. That okay, before you cut my ice time, before you took me out, took me out of the power play, and you need to you know sit down and talk with me. Okay. Let's face the facts, because a lot of times players know. I, I knew that I wasn't as good as I maybe was before, but I don't want to you know, see it, because as a player you can't admit it to yourself that, okay, my time has gone. But if you know, talk it in the summertime, okay, this season, there might be this situation that you maybe not going to play that much, but I still need you to act the right way if you don't play that much. I need you to show the leadership for the young players how to handle the tough situations. Because if you don't say that, then I'm going to start talking bad about you behind your back as a captain or as a leader. Because I have to protect myself, my ego. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. One more question. Oh, we got one there, please. Hi, uh, Ross from Canada. Um, I'm just curious about uh, your experience and maybe your thoughts on being an international player going over to you know, other countries and developing that trust with coaches uh, where there's such a cultural difference maybe. So maybe your experience from the NHL or when you were in Russia. Well, especially when I went to, to North America as a young, young player, I was actually surprised that the coaches in AHL and NHL are so relaxed outside of the hockey, outside of the rink. So that they actually, you know, I was, I've never been in a lunch with my coach before I went to NHL. And suddenly I was in a lunch with the head coach. There was other players too. But, you know, we were in Vancouver, practice was done, they were like, who's going to, the, going to have a lunch? I've never been in lunch with my coach or even talked to my coach outside of the rink before that. Well. The other end of the scale is the Russia. Then it took me six months to understand if we are 
talking about our team or the opponent team. Nobody <laughs> translated to me, so. But that that was kind of a totally different environment. But at the same time, at the end of the season, with the with the course that we had, we started to actually. Well, I don't have time. Short story: the Baza, the training center that we go before the game every night, and I had a my wife and kids in in Russia living with me. And I I went to my coach and said, okay, this doesn't make any sense that I have to go sleep away from my home so that I don't drink and get get drunk. I actually want prepare myself better if I can be home with my kids because I feel more secure. I feel that they are happy. I will be able to play tomorrow better. And let's make a deal. If I start drinking, you can kick me out of the team, but I want to stay home. And he, he looked at me a couple of minutes and said, OK, you don't have to come to come to Basa anymore. And we started to build some relationship with each other. And nowadays, no, well, not, not anymore, but a couple of years back when things were normal, he was coaching the Russian team, and I, you know, meet him, and we always talk, and uh, you know, he asks how my kids are doing and stuff like that. So, but it started off pretty rough, but then we got to actually know each other. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna leave it there. Um, Sorry about the extra time. No, no, extra time is part of hockey, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so look. Um, Please join me in, in thanking Lasse for such a great insight and great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.